Hi, my name is Dr. John Schnorr. I have the pleasure of being one of the co-founders of Coastal Fertility Specialist. I'm also the Division Director of Reproductive Endocrinology at the Medical University of South Carolina. What we're here to talk today about is the evaluation approach to infertility. We know that infertility unfortunately is very common, affecting about 10 to 15 percent of all reproductive age couples. And we know that of those patients who have infertility, sadly only about half ever seek treatment. And the sad part about that is, is that of who, those who do seek treatment, over 90 to 95 percent conceive. And so what we know as reproductive endocrinologists is that infertility is a medical disorder just like any other medical disorder. And just like any other medical disorder, we need to try to figure out what the cause is and fix the underlying cause. And so an infertility evaluation is just that. It's an evaluation to evaluate what could be the causes of infertility. We know that in couples, at least 20% of all couples have more than one cause of infertility. So we don't start the infertility and stop it as soon as we find an abnormality. We actually complete the evaluation so that we know all the causes of infertility a couple can have. When we think about causes of infertility, one of the first things we think about is male factor infertility. Uh, yes, it is true, men can be a cause of infertility. Um, and male factor infertility is evaluated by doing a sperm count. A sperm count is generally done after about two days worth of abstinence. And with that, we can count the number of sperm which are present, the number of sperm that are moving, and the shapes of the sperm under the microscope so we can understand if there's any male factor causes of infertility. We have very good treatments for male factor infertility if we find male factor infertility. Second thing we do is make sure that the uterus for the woman looks normal. We do an ultrasound. We generally do that during the new patient visit. We actually put an ultrasound probe in the vagina, take a very close look at the muscle to the uterus to make sure the muscle to the uterus is normal, doesn't have any fibroids or polyps or other problems. We then, during that ultrasound, move the ultrasound probe over to the side where we can look at both of the ovaries. That's probably the best part of the ultrasound is we can start then understanding what egg number is. So just like we can do a sperm count, we can do an egg count. Ultrasound helps us with an egg count looking at what we call antral follicles. These are very small little follicles in your ovary. These are immature eggs that your body generally is going to mature over the next several months. Knowing how many immature, smaller eggs in your, in your ovary helps us understand the total number of eggs that are in your ovary. The third thing that we do is generally some blood work on the, on the woman to look to see if egg number is normal, and that involves generally a hormone level of FSH, LH, and estradiol. That's done on the third day of the menstrual cycle. There's a newer hormone level called antimullerian hormone level, which we frequently add to that, which is a good egg count hormone level. And the last thing that we then do is a hysterosalpingogram, which is also known as a HSG. I know a lot of women cringe when they hear the word hysterosalpingogram or HSG, um, and they shouldn't because at Coastal Fertility Specialist, we have a very special x-ray machine and use very special equipment, which makes it so that uh, the hysterosalpingogram does not hurt as much, it doesn't cramp as much. It's done by a reproductive endocrinologist. We'll review the images with you and give you immediate results. Hysterosalpingram is generally done between day 7 and day 14 of the menstrual cycle. Um, and with that, we then know that the inside of the uterine cavity is normal and can demonstrate that the fallopian tubes are open and working. There's a very important series of steps in that evaluation so that we then know that we have a good amount of sperm, that we have a good amount of eggs, that we have a normal uterus and open fallopian tubes. If we find individual problems along the way, we can fix every one of those problems, which is why success rates are greater than 90%. Now, a lot of patients are really sad that they actually go, come through, they have infertility, they do a workup, and the workup's completely normal. And so they wonder, what in the world's going on? What, what do you mean, Dr. Schnorr, I have infertility and you can't figure it out? Well, it's not that we can't figure it out, it's just we haven't done every test possible. And the test that we generally skip over is called laparoscopy. Laparoscopy is a surgery which is generally done in the operating room where a woman's under general anesthesia. We make an incision in the belly button and two other smaller incisions where we can then put a telescope in and evaluate the uterus, fallopian tubes, and ovaries. This is a test which is generally skipped in reproductive endocrinology. For many, many years we did laparoscopy testing and we found that women with unexplained infertility have a very high chance of having endometriosis during that surgery, of having pelvic scarring and adhesions during that surgery. So while we found the problems, we learned that we did not treat the problems by doing surgery. We learned that surgery does not really improve pregnancy rates. 
And so we've learned to skip that ten to fifteen thousand dollar test, which is a surgery which has harm and, and other risks to it. And instead we skip over that understanding that there's a high chance of endometriosis and adhesions in couples with unexplained infertility. And then we move into simpler forms of treatment such as ovulation induction and intrauterine insemination. So in summary, we at Coastal Fertility Specialists believe that we need to do a good evaluation to figure out what we're treating. Start at the absolute lowest uh, treatment ring that helps us then move forward into treatment. So we start at the lowest level possible, work our way up until we reach that success, and generally most patients conceive with simpler forms of treatment. So thanks for being here today. I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye-bye.